Hello and welcome back. The first part is now uploading and now obviously the hiker is going to try to get to Crystal Lake in part one and she's walking by the cemetery and you know all these different scenes just I'd never seen these specific scenes in order once I'd seen them and gotten the DVDs it's, it was a different experience because like I say before I ever bought the DVD for um, Jason Lives part six I'd never seen any of these movies except you know passing through on cable so after seeing part six I believe I saw part three and then you know I bought part three and then I, I wasn't interested in part one for whatever reason and I finally saw it and uh, yeah what can I say I mean I'm watching it in order but part of me always makes me think I want to just watch them in the order of how I like them or the order but I might as well just order, you know, do it as a marathon, you know, one through ten, one through. But I don't have. I had Friday the Thirteenth, um, the remake, but I don't really count that. I don't count Jason vs. Freddy, so I just count it as ten movies. That's, I know that's crazy, but I mean, it's how I look at it. I don't just like the remake that much either. I mean, sometimes I can put it on and just hate it, um, but sometimes I, you know, can take the positive from it. It's, you know, it has some. There's some pretty good stuff in it. Um, but, yeah, it can annoy me if I'm, you know, wanting to watch just one of the pure originals. I find it to be kind of just... Um, you know, a grab bag of all the best parts of the series, but done poorly and, you know, all that. I don't know. But overall, you know... Um, I don't know where I rank part one. I mean, you got these kind of great scenes. You got Bing Crosby's son. And they're setting up for the camp. So this is always just, it sets up this constant thing about teens coming into the camp to set up for the arrival of the upcoming camp students and, you know, campers and all that. And there's just something so promising and so... Um, I don't know, I don't want to say beautiful, but like, yeah, really harmonious and um, just really uh, happy to get all these, you know, people together to be the camp counselors and do little construction projects um, before the campers arrive to make sure everything's you know, safe and operational. And I really like summer camp and everything like that. And it's just really fun to see them at these uh, various locations Crystal Lake being a very diverse camp with very, very different filming locations, clearly. But, uh, you know, in part one, there's some really cool parts at Camp uh, Nobi Bosco, which is in New Jersey, that they repurposed for Camp Crystal Lake, and then, et cetera, et cetera, through the whole movie. And then there's obviously cabins, you know, luxurious um, enclaves, type chalets, almost. Uh, you know, like in part four, and then I guess you would say part seven. Um, but you, there's just so much to like about this series. You got just such various characters, you know, in this movie that then kind of get, you know, you got the the Bing Crosby goofball, and then that's what Shelley is in part three, kind of, and then the goofball, uh, some of his characteristics of the goofball Bing Crosby guy go to the yo-yo guy in part three. So, I mean, there's just so much cool stuff in the movie. Um, we have to, and I may watch the th part three and the 3D glasses, at least, a uh, part of it. But I won't restart it from the beginning once I stop watching the 3D glasses. I just want to, uh, you know, go through the experience of, of these movies, you know. Part two, for whatever reason, I don't rank it up in the highest ones when I do it. You know, when I, when I do rank my higher ones, it's usually three, eight, six, and four that I put on a higher pedestal, but I love seven. I love five. I mean, I don't know why I just didn't say five in there, too. Three, four, five, eight, and six. Three, four, five, eight, and six. Not in that order, but those are like, you know, this is the, this is, those are the higher echelon, I guess. I don't know. They're all so good, though. So anyway, I mean, I could just, just 
there's worse movies to watch, you know. There's um, definitely worse movies to watch, and it's a wonderful holiday. Uh, you can see all these movies, um, you know, and they're, the power of them. The only thing is I have to get the DVDs off the shelf and everything like that. And like I say, October 13th totally snuck up on me. I wasn't uh, really thinking. But anytime it's Friday is on a 6th, I still realize it a week ahead and everything like that. But got one in January of 2017. That was a special one. And there's always, um, you know, various people from the series that I've uh, come in contact with uh, from becoming just a fan of the series and meeting Kane Hodder and talking about Hard Bodies with him, which is that um, great comedy he was in that also features Darcy DeMoss from... Uh, Jason lives. She's the girl that gets her face through the RV. What are you doing back there? Are you taking a dump? <laughs> and then obviously, you know, teenage Frankenstein. That's probably the best sequence in in any uh, Friday the Thirteenth movie. It's really hard to say that though because yeah, I, get, I think it is the the whole RV sequence and meeting CJ Graham and talking about this RV sequence. I mean, literally, I've met, I mean, not in person yet, Victor Miller, but everyone else I've met, Peter Brackey, Shelley, uh, C.J. Graham, Kane Hodder, uh, Sean S. Cunningham, and then I've experienced or talked on the phone or interviewed or been part and part, you know, part of working with, um, I'd say like almost 20, 30% of the casts of these movies at this point so i mean you got, you got like peter brackey who's been in contact with you know damn near 95 98 percent so gotta respect that guy he's a really sharp observer of the friday the 13th lore i mean one thing i'm realizing is this girl's late in part one so here if you arrive late in these movies it's never a good sign but she's already supposed to be late She's already, like, they're already setting up at the camp. So she should have gotten out of school or she should have gotten however she got gotten up here better because she just got picked up by uh, Ms. Voorhees in a, vent, in a Jeep. What I love about this is it's so gender neutral. She gets in this Jeep. It's a gender neutral looking Jeep. It's green. It's blue. Who knows? That driver there looked pretty masculine. But the way that she's regarding the person that she's hitching with here, um, you know, as the hitchhiker is regarding Mrs. Voorhees, there's no tip to it is Mrs. Voorhees or it's a woman or it's a man. I find that to be a really, um, it's, it's never been imitated in another movie or perfected as well as it is here. This is a scary ass scene for this chick. She gets in and she's obviously um, not completely at comfort with this woman and we're getting you know, if this was a man, she probably wouldn't have even gotten in this dude's Jeep, to be honest. I don't know. It's, it's a very interesting way that it's handled, but she doesn't show her fear. Let's just say she would have gotten in when it was a man. And you kind of do think it is a man as, as it's happening. But obviously, um, I don't know. My point is, it's hard to make my point about this all the way, but they never show the killer in this scene, and they never show the killer in several other scenes. And the way that the killer, you know, force her to jump out the van or the jeep and then stalk her down and kill her here it's really amazing she never says um the victim never says anything about who the identity of or and and who's chasing her or anything like that she's like no stop lady nothing like that like lady leave me alone nothing like that so i find that to be a very good dramatic you know they could have showed their hand a little bit earlier uh, and I like that, that they never did, and they shave it to the end. They nev You never know who the killer is exactly. I thought the first time I saw this movie that the killer was the, you know, the guy set the main dude setting up the camp. <laughs> you know, he's just trying to get all these teens there and stalk them and all that and whatever, I mean. Um, but yeah, you never know anything about Mrs. Voorhees, and then she's, she emerges, you know, late in the film. So that's a great part. Anyway, um, like I say, the Friday the 13th movies, I can go on for days talking about them. So have a wonderful day. I'm going to enjoy all these movies. Bye for now.